I woke up this morning and started combing through the emails that had accumulated from the night previous, as I commonly do, and Clean Technica came in clutch with several articles of interest, as they so often do. They're a good news outlet. You can sign up for their daily newsletter centered on electric vehicles, or you can choose several subcategories, and I choose electric vehicles. Uh, the article by Tom Story, titled, The End of the Gas-Powered Vehicle Era. Look at the numbers. <clears throat> now, Clean Technica is an environmentally focused organization, so sometimes you have to take what they say underneath the perspective that uh, their um, stated objective is to uh, forward technology that is better for the environment. I mean, that's the title of the organization, so sometimes you might feel a little bias uh, coming through in the authoring, but lots of the information that they produce is actually um, objective, in my opinion, and I find it a good source of information. And a lot of what's in here is as well, and I'll link the article down below in the description if you want to go read it. It's a short read, uh, good use of time, well authored. And right here it talks about the decrease of ICE sales. Even though the population in the United States has increased, the sale of internal combustion engine cars is starting to decrease in a noticeable trend. Similarly, in Europe, their population is similarly increasing, but the ICE sales are decreasing. The article does also mention about uh, government subsidies, and basically what it does is it borrows future sales. So you introduce government sub subsidies, basically you're just borrowing some of the future sales for now, but the trend is still going to continue. And uh, it basically has a negligible effect with the government subsidies was the point that he was making. So whether the IRA um, tax credit is revoked or stays put, it really doesn't have a bearing on these long-term trends is what he's trying to say. And I would agree that that is the case. And there's some graphs that kind of spell this all out, the decrease of ICE sales and what we can expect with the trend. <clears throat> what he's um, suggesting as the main point of the article is that the automobile industry has uncovered a long time ago, it goes all the way back to the 20s and 30s, that you know you introduce a new vehicle and it stimulates more sales, like different wheel covers, different color palettes, different general shapes. And what that does is it causes the number of sales to increase. His argument is that we now have 71 new EV models available. And by the fourth quarter of 20. 26, 12 new models will be added, which is about a new electric vehicle being introduced every six weeks for the next 18 months. And what he's saying is, irregardless of what's going on in the background noise, the fact that this predictable behavior of being able to spur on adoption by introducing new models is going to continue. There's really no stopping it. Let's get into some of those graphs. This is one that I very commonly refer to. This was pulled from documents from the state of North Carolina's electric vehicle plan put out by the previous governor. And although it's specific to the state of North Carolina, this same graph, this is a very common S-curve, is seen multiple places elsewhere concerning electric vehicle adoption. And what the goal is, is to have the sale of electric cars be 50% by 2030. Now that might sound like a lot, but you'll see it's going to take decades in order for it to actually have an environmental impact, which is kind of like the underlying goal of these, uh, where these documents are sourced from, is trying to improve the environment by uh, moving to electrification of transportation, especially in the light duty sector. Um, and as you can see right here in 2023, we're at, I don't know, uh, 7%, and then 2024, 9%, uh, 2025, it looks like about 12%. This is right in line with what the um, current predictions are for uh, 2025 and the actual numbers for 2024, we were 9%. So <clears throat> we're right on um, script. We haven't really deviated. So if that stands to reason, you could see where the story goes, is that eventually what happens, it just is a slam dunk game over event. And this is what I'm talking about, that it actually takes a while, even if you hit the mark of 50% EV sales in 2030, the time it actually takes to drain all the internal combustion engine cars out of the system is extensive. They're talking 2050. Uh, right here, it's mid-2049 is when they'll hit 
EVs making up 50% of the cars on the road. So that's a full uh, 20 years after the mark that 50% are being sold on the road. So it's a very slow whole generation type of thing that this transition is going to go through. And uh, there's really no stopping. It's not just the United States. It's APAC, it's EU, and uh, North America as a whole are all going through these changes. And the background politics really don't have a bearing to that effect is the point of the article. And I would agree with that. And I don't consider that to be a hopeful environmentalist trying to paint a rosy picture. I think that's actual fact. From the National Renewable Energies Laboratory 2023 study, this graph shows three different scenarios, low scenario, mid scenario, and high scenario. And this was a very commonly quoted study by the National Renewable Energies Laboratory, where 42 million cars are going to be on the road um, by 2030. Uh, the mid scenario is 33 and the low scenario is 30. But let's just say it's the low scenario. <clears throat> what they're planning for is how much electric vehicle charging infrastructure is necessary in order to support those different scenarios. And that went back to the whole conversation of what can we do in order to spur on electric vehicle charging infrastructure build out. And I think that had some bearing on the passing of the uh, NEVI program within the IRA uh, back in 2023. Regardless, there's many studies that indicate the adoption curve is still on track and people who are thinking will suddenly wave a magic wand and the adoption of electric vehicles being uh, faster, quieter, more reliable, more convenient if you can charge at home. And in my personal opinion, I like that I don't donate a portion of my paycheck to the House of Saad on a uh, <clears throat> routine basis, I keep my money with the uh, within the country uh, using domestically produced energy, and I think that is really understated as a benefit for electric vehicle adoption. I've heard the purchase and reliance on foreign fuel to be characterized as the largest transfer of wealth in all of human history. And if we could negate some of that by moving to domestically produced energy for our light duty and some of the mid duty and heavy duty transport, it's only in the best interest of the country. And also, of course, the environmental uh, benefit uh, to the extent that it exists. Regardless, a uh, very interesting article. Link down below in the description. Feel free to go and read it if you have the free time to do so. It's a short read. Thanks for watching.